With Bungie finally introducing a sick new emblem for reaching Ascendant in the competitive playlist and planning to introduce a new one each season, there is now a new reason to grind to Ascendant rank in Destiny 2. The competitive playlist is often one of the most sweaty playlists outside of Trials, and it can easily feel like a one step forward, two steps back process as you gain and lose points. Today I'm going to be sharing tips that will help you reach Ascendant as quick as possible, as well as improve as an overall player as you climb the ladder. You also won't need a full team to implement the tips I share today, and a majority of these tips apply even if you're grinding it out solo. Now let's get into the video, and if you enjoy, make sure you drop a like. Tip one is going to be paying attention to your teammates, and this tip is as simple as it sounds. It's about using your eyes and your radar to know where your teammates are positioned at at all times. Too often do I see players solely pay attention to the location of the enemy, ignore the positioning of their team, and without realizing it, isolate themselves into a 1v3 with the enemy team. Paying close attention to your team's location visibly and via radar is going to provide you with additional information on how you should be moving about the map and engaging the enemy team. Let me highlight a short example of this. So in this clip, what you're going to see is a great example of what typically happens at the beginning of a survival match is often everyone kind of splits off in different directions, or you have one or two players that goes off together and one player that splits off by themselves, maybe trying to get a crispy flank or whatever the case may be. So I'm going to kind of play this clip and showcase that exact example happening and how you can make sure and how I also in this example realized what was happening and how I was isolating myself and how I had to get back. So we're going to play the clip. As you can see, we all spawn up. I'm paying attention to our radar. I see my teammates going off kind of the left and I'm going to pause it right here. Obviously got this guy jumping up right here, but the biggest thing I noticed, I'll even go back a couple of, couple of frames here is you can kind of see right here. Look at my radar. My teammates aren't even close to me on our radar. When they're on your radio, you'll see those little blue dots and you see them off far kind of away and back. So maybe they were a little slow off the start or they're AFK, but then you can notice up here, it's just me and I got two people up here in the distance. And then this is right about the time where I realized, okay, it is me versus at least two, maybe three, because one of these guys could probably flank coming down here on the middle side of the map. And this is where I realized I need to stop, do a 180 and get back to my teammates. This is the point where a lot of players wouldn't do that. A lot of players, myself included, would hold right here in the middle on these stairs and end up getting killed. And so this is where you gotta kind of swallow your ego, not try to 1v3 everyone. And as you can see, we're gonna do just that. And I was gonna pause real quick and kind of what exactly I would say was gonna happen is you can see that guy come right here. So if I would have kept finding this guy, I would have easily gotten flanked and I would have been automatically been a free kill for them, no problem and my teammates are still basically back in their spawn waiting to see what's gonna happen. And so again, as you'll see, I turn around and I bounce out and I get a thousand nades thrown at me, but I'm able to survive and get back to my team. And so that's really gonna be the gist of that clip, but you kind of see my point there. That's a point where a lot of players would have gotten stuck, would have stayed and tried to fight that and gotten flanked and been upset at their teammates when really, in that moment, if I would have died there, the only person I would have had to have blame was myself. And so that's a really just quick and short example to highlight the importance of paying attention to where your teammates are, not just visibly, but also using your radar. So when you can't see them physically in front of you and where they're positioned, you can also pay attention to where they are via your radar. And so that's the, all the information I use to make the best decision. Our next tip is hardware matters. What I mean by this is things like resolutions you play at, the frame rate of your TV slash monitor, and the overall technology in your monitor will dramatically impact how you experience Destiny 2, not just in the competitive playlist, but overall as well. Playing on most televisions or low refresh rate monitors immediately puts you at a disadvantage in terms of your enemy having lower input lag and generally being able to react faster due to having a higher refresh rate. Which brings me to the BenQ EX270QM. This is a 1440p, 240Hz monitor with FreeSync Premium Pro and HDR600. What does all that mean? It means you'll get buttery smooth gameplay, fast response times, and all that without any screen tearing. Gaming at 240Hz is the only way I game, and once you've tried it, you can never go back. And I recommend setting this monitor's AMA settings to 2 and turning on blur reduction to get the best motion clarity settings for this monitor. This monitor also has new optimized HDRI settings, which will optimize image color detail and clarity to provide a beautiful image to go along with that high refresh rate. 
This feature has also been further optimized via a recent firmware update that fine tunes color tone and allows more flexibility to adjust light tuner and color balance settings to really get the most beautiful image possible that suits your personal preference. This monitor also has a feature called light tuner, which adjusts the light and dark balance to make sure you don't miss any enemies that could be in the shadows. It's one of my favorite features on this monitor because it brightens up darker areas of the map where I might not have spotted enemies before, and I recommend running plus two to help bring out that extra detail. This monitor also features HDMI 2.1, which gives you another option to reach 240 Hertz outside of your standard display port. And it also means this monitor will reach the max 120 Hertz refresh rate on PS5 and Xbox Series X. This monitor also comes with a remote control and OSD mapping, making it easier than ever to change settings and adds to the premium feel of this monitor. Lastly, this monitor also features 2.1 speakers that allow you to fully immerse yourself in your game. And I mainly game using my headphones, but it's great having the option to switch these speakers during more casual gaming sessions, or if I just want to sit in my office and play some music through the speakers and not have to worry about putting on my headphones. Now, BenQ sent me this monitor to try and review, but didn't review this video before, and everything expressed here is my honest opinion. Getting to compare the BenQ EX270QM to my Alienware AW2721D, which is also a 240Hz monitor, and I can actually tell you now, all 240Hz monitors are not made the same. The motion clarity and amount of image adjustments you can do on the BenQ monitor have really impressed me, and this monitor is much better than not only my previous 240Hz monitor, but any monitor I've tried. Not to mention, this monitor has multiple features like the custom OSD mapping, controller, and speakers that my Alienware simply doesn't have at all. I can confidently say that if you try this monitor, you will see a noticeable improvement in your ability to track enemies in PvP, as well as your overall gaming experience. And I can't stress enough just how noticeable the motion clarity was on this BenQ monitor compared to my previous one, especially when I fine tuned my settings and hit AMA2, turned on blur reduction, the clarity of motion, especially when you're tracking enemies with the hand cannon, especially with how fast enemies can move in Destiny 2, was just night and day. I had a much easier time hitting my shots on moving targets, and so that is why I recommend this monitor so highly. For anyone looking to upgrade their monitor, you can find a link to this beast of a monitor in the description below. Tip three is an important one, and that's understanding the moment. This could mean a million different things, but to simplify it, it's about situational awareness, and when it comes to situational awareness, the two things that come to mind are when to use a super and when to slow things down. There are two general best practices I use when deciding to use a super or not. First, is using my super here going to win me the round or match, or prevent me from losing the round or match? The answer to either of those questions is yes, then that is the moment you want to use your super. Any hesitation around this can result into a match getting out of hand, and result in a loss unless you have a near perfect use of your super, or even worse, you go to orbit with your super, which we never want to happen. Now in this next clip, I'm gonna show an example of a player on another team that held their super, in my opinion, a little bit too long. This is nothing personal on this player, I don't know this player, but it is something I observed and wondered out loud in this match why they were holding onto their super for so long, which I think is a common occurrence. People holding their super for the perfect, perfect moment, which often doesn't present itself. All right, setting up this clip, as you can see, we are 2-2, two, two, all three players up on both sides, but our team has three lives to their zero with 32 seconds remaining. So their team is already in a terrible spot. And so as you can see up here, we have one super left on the board with 32 seconds remaining. So the pressure is on to use the super and winner of this, wins the game. So even more pressure, I could say, in this scenario. So we're gonna kind of play it through and I'll kind of talk it over. But as you can see right here, they're gonna get a kill and then we're gonna get a knock. So now it's gonna be 2v3 and we're at two lives to zero. And at this point, the clock is ticking down and we're just sitting here. Nothing's happening, we're just kind of waiting. We're playing our lives, we got time on our side, the clock is on our side. And we're at this point now, we're about to get to the 10 second mark. We're hitting the 10 second mark and we have not popped our super yet. And so this is a scenario from my perspective and my point of view where this player with their super is just holding it for the perfect moment and they're not, they don't have situational awareness. I would imagine they're not even aware that the clock is ticking down and they're literally about to lose the match. And so let's see what time they actually pop it. So, Basically at the five second mark, they don't pop their super. 
And especially knowing that you have a roaming super uh, like the one they're using, you know you're gonna have to pop that early, you're gonna have to cover some ground, people are gonna be running. And because of that, he went to orbit in his super. And that is a travesty. That should never happen. You never wanna hold your super that long. That player should have probably popped their super closer to about this mark here, about this, so it's probably around the 20, 20 second mark. I'm ADSing so you can't see it, but I would probably recommend that they would have popped it a little bit earlier and give them a chance to get at least two kills. And then hopefully their teammate, who's also still alive, could have cleaned up the other. But ultimately, they went to orbit in their super, and this is a great example of situational awareness or understanding the moment. Now, when it comes to slowing it down, this can be influenced by two things. The first being lives, and this plays a big factor since a majority of your matches in competitive playlist will be survival. I've lost one too many survival matches by having teammates who can't slow it down, continue to push in recklessly when we have a life advantage. Similar to what we did in the last clip, understanding your life advantage is key in putting the pressure on the enemy team and allows your team to force their hand and set up strong points on the map. The other part of slowing down is playing slowly to allow you or another team member to get a super or ability up to make a play versus rushing to engage. So what you're about to see in this clip is a great example of a player who has incredible situational awareness. And this is a player who's not even on my team. We're not in voice chat. I was running solo and he was actually, or they I should say, was actually part of a duo. And so what you're gonna see here is me and this player playing slowly together and this player having great situational awareness to understand that he has his well and what you're gonna see happen is he's gonna pop his well to get me my super. As you can see up here, we're at 2-0. So there's not a lot of pressure on us. We were handily controlling this match overall, but the time is clicking down, so we are about to go to point. So as you can see here, we are playing together and we're playing too slow. No one's rushing in recklessly. No one's trying to make, a, you know, be overly aggressive. And we're both playing pretty passive, waiting to play off the point. And now, as you can see, the point is up and we are still waiting. And he knows I have my super now. And as we are sitting here waiting, we're both kind of playing for the pick. And this is really what you would want to do is play together, play patient, play together. You can see there, we're gonna slide back out. You're gonna see here, he's gonna throw his melee. And once he throws his melee, I'm gonna slide in to get the pick. And then you're gonna see how we win the match. So he throws his melee and I pay attention, I slide. And then from there, the rest is history. That is an example of great situational awareness by both of us because he popped the well to help me get my super, but then we played slowly and together to get the single pick versus relying on me on just randomly supering one player hoping that other player didn't kill me and then maybe even kill my teammate. Now again, how likely would that have been? Hard to say, but I think that was a textbook way to kind of slow things down and play smart, play to get your abilities back to give yourself the best possible chance to win a match. Our next tip is going to be more of a mindset one, and that is if you aren't gonna run the meta, then own it. Right now, the current meta is Titan slash Immortal SMG, and next season, I'm sure it will be something different. Now, if you want to give yourself the best chance to win, then whatever is meta or near the top of the meta is what you want to run. But if for whatever reason you prefer another class or playstyle like I do, then you have to know you're putting yourself at a disadvantage and accept that. To do so and complain is like choosing to tie your own arm behind your back in a boxing match, then be mad that the person you're fighting is using both hands. If anything, when you beat teams running the meta when you're not, that should make the victory feel even sweeter. But if we get too caught up in the meta and how broken or annoying it is, it will do nothing but keep us from playing our best. So focus on what you can control and what you can run, and that's the weapons and loadouts that you choose. Choose what you feel you play best with and own it. Accept that you're gonna run into stuff that's cheesy, that's overpowered, that's every season and will be every season, most likely in the rest of Destiny's history. And so just playing with what you play best, owning that, playing as best as you can within that and accepting that sometimes you're gonna lose the cheesy stuff, cheesy play styles, and until Bungie either nerfs it, fixes it, or the meta changes, that will be how it's gonna be. Focus on what you can control and you'll be a lot better off for it. And for tip number five, and this may be the most helpful and easiest tip to implement right away, and that's running in duos. Choosing one of your friends or buddies that you feel you play best with or is just a really good individual player. And queuing as duos is a great way to get to ascendant rank. In 3v3, when you have three players or a full team versus a full team, 
A lot of times those are gonna be the sweatiest, hardest matches. And typically those teams are just gonna be a lot better in my experience. Running in duos does a couple of things. One, it gives you some type of communication, a kind of another player you can communicate and play off with. It also minimizes how many bad teammates you could potentially have in the scenario if you're running solo. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. You're not getting the disadvantages of 3v3, but you're not getting the disadvantages of running completely solo. I had a lot of success and a lot of win streaks just running duos. And the second we picked up a third player, it would just get significantly more difficult uh, despite how good or not our team was. Sometimes we just played really good teams, sometimes we didn't. But overall, I found running in duos the easiest. I will say I did a majority of my Ascendant rank grind solo, but even from solo to duos was easier. So if you're looking for the easiest way as you implement all these tips, just get off the ground running. Running in duos is gonna give you someone to kind of grind along with, as well as do call outs and kind of coordinate with without having the overall coordination and sweatiness of the 3v3 full team versus full team.